we have been talking about parabolas. Parabolas as conic sections. We talked about it as a uh, conic section and as a locus. What we haven't done so far is come up with the equation, what this thing is going to look like. So that's what objective two is about. And you can see in this very interesting diagram here, we have a picture of a graph that makes a parabola. Um, it's some British piece of art or whatever, and I think it's probably commentary on something. It's probably feminist. Let's see. Anyway, so let's come up with the equation of a parabola in standard form. So, whoa, did you see that? Watch this. No, it's not going to work again. Oh, there it goes. So, we're going to use the locus definition of a parabola to come up with an equation for this thing. Just like I showed you with a circle. Okay, so using all this point, all these points, we're using um, the vertical directrix. You're going to do the one for a horizontal directrix as part of your homework. And it we will proceed in basically the same way. So if you're, you know, your x's and your y's are going to be kind of switched and stuff. You'll see that in just a second. Okay, so the locus definition here says that the distance from, you can see it's marked right here in the picture, the distance from P to A has to be equal to the distance from P to F. P to F. The definition, the locus definition, is saying that a parabola is a set of all points that are the same distance away from the directrix, that's this one, and the focus, that's this one. It's saying those two segments are exactly the same length. Okay? So, we're going to just apply the distance formula distance formula on that. Pitiful. Pitiful. Anyway, the distance formula. Uh, just like I did with the circle there. If I'm going to apply the distance formula on it, I need some coordinates for point A. So some coordinates for point A. Let's think about this for a second. This is a vertical line, and on the vertical line, uh, this part right here from, from the uh, vertex to the focus is P. So going backwards, this is minus P. So the X coordinate, point A, must be H minus P. Comma. Now if I, if I take a look at this, since this is perpendicular, it is perpendicular to, um, you know, let me just draw it in there, there you go. It's perpendicular to the directrix. That means that anything on here is an exact horizontal line, so its Y coordinate must be Y. Here we go. So uh, you'll see that redrawn right there. There we go. Hey, looks like I got it right. So according to the definition, we're saying the distance from P to A is exactly equal to P to F. So I'm just going to use the distance formula on PA and use the distance formula again on PF and set them equal to each other. So take a look. This is what it's going to look like. Bah. That thing just keeps pulsing. I don't know what's going on. So let's make sense of the stuff that's underneath all these square roots. Don't let it scare you. Just jump. Don't let it scare you. Don't, don't, don't be frightened. Anyway, so the distance from P to A, I, I subtract my x's. So it's x minus, and then it's the quantity H minus P, because that's the x coordinate of point A. And that's what I have right there, and then squared. Plus the difference of the two y's, y minus y. That's going to be pretty easy to simplify, because that's just going to be 0. Okay, so on the other side where we're talking about P to F, again, difference of the X's squared, so X minus, and this time the quantity is H plus P, and then we have it squared. And then we do the same thing with the difference of the Y's, Y minus K, Y minus K squared. So there we go. That is nothing like the actual equation. There's no square roots in it all. So uh, one of the ways that you simplify an equation like this is just to square both sides. If I yeah, call up the pin and find the marker pin, there we go. Okay, if I just square both sides of this, then there's no square roots anymore. And then I'm going to have a lot of algebra to do to simplify this thing, to clean it up. As you'll see right here, so I'm just going to go ahead and take that. Just, it's from the previous slide. Just, I ran out of room. There's no way I was going to be able to fit on that on on one side. So now I'm going to square both sides. And when I square both, oh yeah, that's zero. So okay, I cancel that one out. 
So in a square both sides, there's no square roots anymore. Okay, everybody with me so far? Now, this quantity that is over here, this y minus k squared, I'm going to leave that like it is because that is part of the equation. What I need to do is I need to simplify this piece together with this piece. And notice that they have a lot of stuff in common, so stuff is going to cancel. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to square those things out. So think of it like this. Remember, if it was something like x minus a quantity squared, the shortcut is x squared minus, you keep the same side, and then you multiply those two numbers together and you double it. So it's minus 2x times a, and then finally the last one squared plus a squared. Okay, so we're doing exactly that kind of thing, except for this time our a is equal to this quantity, h minus p. And I'm going to keep that in parentheses. I'm not going to expand that out just yet. So that's the step that I took right here. Expanded out the binomial on the left-hand side, x squared minus 2x times h minus p plus h minus p squared. It's exactly what I wrote just right up here in purple. Okay. Now I did the same thing over here on the right hand side, exactly the same thing. The only difference is that this has an h plus p instead of an h minus p in it. Okay? Do you see anything that's going to cancel? Look at this. There's x squared on both sides. Get rid of them. Just cancel them out. Okay. Now, the next thing that we're going to clean up are the terms that have uh, the h minus p in it and the 2x on the outside. So we're just going to distribute that through. It's going to distribute this negative 2x over here on the left-hand side to both of these pieces, and this negative 2x, just distribute that through as well. Okay, so when I distribute it, now look, is there something that will cancel out this time? I have a negative 2h over there on the left side and a negative 2h over here on the right-hand side. Those things are going to cancel out. What about the 2xp and the negative 2xp? No, they're not. So I'm going to take this negative 2xp and I'm just going to add it over to the left-hand side of that equation to make it look like that. Okay, a little bit more simplification, and that is the, the, uh, the binomials that are left over. We've got to square those things out. So on the left-hand side, whenever it squares out, you're going to have h squared minus 2hp plus b squared. On the right-hand side, it's going to be exactly the same, except for it has a plus sign in between the, the two hp. Okay, stuff cancel out? Sure does. h squareds are gone. p squareds are gone. Look at that. This thing is cleaning up pretty nicely. Now, the two hp, it's not going to cancel out with this negative one. I'm going to actually subtract it over. This is going to total up to a negative four hp. Almost there. The last thing is, is that over here on the left hand side, it has a common factor of 4p. Factor that sucker out. What you're left with is the equation that we've been looking for. So this is the equation of a parabola that has a vertical, uh, vertical directrix. And its vertex is at h comma k. And its focal length is p. Here you go. So uh, let me detail all those things. p is the focal length. And then we have the h comma k being the vertex. Just remember again, the h and the k, when they're in the parentheses like that, both of those things are lying to you. Okay, so this is on the flow chart that you probably already have printed out. It's, so I just put it right up there. We've already looked at this slide. We've already made sense of all the points on here, but now we throw it up here with the, uh, the actual equation. And so whenever I look at the equation, what I'm so used to seeing is the x being squared. When the x was squared, it's a parabola that opens upwards or downwards. But here on this one, when the y is squared, it opens to the right or to the left. Specifically, let's talk about this. If p, it's a positive number, so if it's greater than 0, then this thing is going to look like uh, it's going to open to the right. right? And if p is a negative number, if our focal length is negative, then this is going to open to the left, like so. Okay? Some things to keep in mind. So let's apply that right here. Very simple, simple case. Write the equation of a parabola whose vertex is at 0, 0, and whose focus is at 
P0. Sketch a little picture out, of course. So we got 0, 0, there's the focus, and, uh, I mean the vertex. Focus is at P0, let's just say that's right there. Let's say that's P. We know our parabola has to wrap around that. So this one is going to open towards the right. This means we have ourselves a vertical directrix. And I'm going to write my equation like this. Um, whoops, where's my, there we go. Notice that uh, when I derived the equation, I had the y squared d thing over there on the right hand side, but whenever you see it on the flow chart, when you saw it on the last slide, usually have it on the left hand side. That's, that's uh, like conventional. So I'm going to write that one. I'm going to write it like that. So y minus k squared is equal to 4p times x minus h. Now let's just fill in our points. My h and my k are just 0, 0, and my focal length is p, so it stays the same. So this just becomes y squared is equal to 4px. In your book, the whole first uh, section, this 9.2, that's all it is, is. All of them are centered at the, at the origin. I figured you guys could handle ones that weren't just centered at the origin, so that's why I, you know, I broadened it just a bit for you. You're welcome. Okay, so now let's look at the stuff for the horizontal directrix. This is more like the one that we're used to, but now with the new points thrown in there, the directrix and the focus, and all of the little algebra that goes with it. Okay, so notice on this equation, it's the h minus, uh, the x minus h that's being squared, and over here on the right hand side, it's the focal length, 4 times the focal length that's being multiplied times y minus k. Okay, so those things get switched. If it's x squared, it's going to open upwards or downwards. If it's y squared, it's going to open to the right or to the left. So looking at all of these little points, vertex, of course, h comma k, the focal length is p, it's p, and since I'm going upwards, this is in the, the y direction. So I'm going to take k plus p, and there's where the uh, new coordinate of my focus is. If I subtract that from the vertex, I get y minus p, and that's the equation of the directrix. The directrix is horizontal, that means the axis of symmetry is vertical, so it's a vertical line x equals something, x equals h. It's the x coordinate of the vertex, because that's what it has to pass through. Remember that the uh, vertex and the focus are both on the axis of symmetry, right? Okay. So let's uh, do the same kind of thing we did on exercise 3 with exercise 4, right? Yeah. So write the equation of parabola whose vertex is at 0, 0, origin again. Focus is at 0, P. 0, P. So there's the focus. Oh, no, vertex. Why do I say that? Okay. And uh, focus is up here. Let's say this is P. And it's got to wrap around that one, so this time it's going to open upwards. If it opens upwards, this means we're going to have an x squared. So it looks like this. x minus h squared is equal to 4p times y minus k. That one doesn't get squared. Now just plug in your 0, 0 for your vertex and you're home free. x squared is equal to 4p, I don't need parentheses there anymore, times y. Again, this is what that 9.2, the first section of your book on parabolas, it all deals with these things centered at the uh, origin, which is just too simple for you guys, just too simple. Okay, so I think this is the last one we'll look at in this little video. What's the relationship between the A and the P? So look at these two functions. Here is the function definition. I'm sorry, I called the other one a function, and you know, I don't know, it may not be. So here's the function definition of a parabola as we defined it a long time ago. And over here, this is the conic section one, the conic section with a locus. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to relate this P to this A. In order to do that, all I have to do is make one of the equations look like the other one. Well, why don't we just make this thing look like, look like, the other one. How do I do that? I solve it for y. I get y by itself. 
Okay, in order to get y by itself, I've got to get rid of this 4p that's right there. So I divide it on the other side. Instead of dividing, I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal. So I'm going to multiply both sides of this times 1 over 4p. Yeah, 1 over 4p. There we go. So on the left hand, I'm going to have 1 over 4p times x minus h squared is equal to... Now, that's gone from the right-hand side, and I just have y minus k. And then finally, let's get the k over here. So I have k plus 1 over 4p times x minus a squared. Okay, so if I compare that, to, oh, equals y. If I compare that to this one, everything looks the same except for this. This must be the same as that a must be equal to 1 over 4p. That's the relationship between them. Okay, let's relate this to something that we just talked about. The kind of relationship that they have, since p is down on the bottom and a is up on the top, this means that these things are inversely proportional. Inversely proportional. That means as A goes up, then that means that the focal length must go down. So let's think about this for just a second. Whenever our A was really, really big, it made a skinny parabola. Okay, so this is saying as A is really, really big, that means P must be really, really small. So this means that the smaller the focal length, the smaller the focal length, the skinnier parabola must be fatter the focal length, or the longer it is, the more stretched out it has to be. Okay, so that wraps up this objective, objective two, about writing the equation of a parabola in standard form. When we come back, we're going to put the pieces together. Well, actually, no, this, this isn't like the end of the end of it, but this is where we're going to stop. We're going to actually um, come up with some more complicated equations, ones that aren't centered at zero, zero.